Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in the last video we stood up a MISP instance, which again, just a refresher, is basically our database, malware database filled with IOC. So if you haven't seen that last video, uh, I'll throw it up in the top right right now and make sure you watch that one before continuing with this one just so you can wrap your mind around things a little easier and get an understanding of what MISP is and what MISP does. We left off getting you guys familiar with MISP, uh, kind of what it is and how it's bringing data in and what that looks like as it comes in. And so what we can do to make this even more powerful is integrate with MISP API. So MISP supports a REST uh, API that we can query with a tool such as Cortex, which we've already stood up in a few previous videos, to search MISP as a whole. You know, you can kind of think of like Cortex is making a Google search to MISP and saying, hey, MISP, I have, you know, this particular IP address or this hash value or this domain. Do you have any events that do you have any events where this particular IOC exists? And if it does, it'll go ahead and spit it back out to us. So now our analysts aren't having to waste time manually searching all of these, right? That's still too slow. Even though we have a single, we have a single pane window into into this database of malware, we still don't want to have to. We still need to be faster. We we don't want our SOC analysts still manually clicking around and having to manually open everything. We want them to be able to search MISP at the click of a button, and that's what MISP a API allows us to do, which which is really awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and integrate this with Cortex, which I'll <laughs> I'll throw a link to that video if you haven't seen that one already in the top right as well. Um, but what and, and so what we'll do is is pretty easy. So as part of the Cortex install, we installed all of the various analyzers, right? So if we go into analyzers here after logging in to Cortex, uh, you can see I already have this MISP one configured. And but I will go ahead and walk you guys through uh, configuring this as well. So I'll actually pop into organization here in the top right select my analyzers and from here you'll see all the analyzers that we have available to us uh, i'll just do a control f to find the misp module uh or misp analyzer and here we go and here you see a little description query multiple misp instances for events containing an observable so we'll go ahead and select edit and i'll walk you guys through what and we'll walk through the configuration so the name of the MISP server, uh, this can be whatever you want, uh, kind of like what we did with the Cortex install. We just, this name can be whatever value you want it to be here. In this case, I just have MISP1. And then within the URL block, uh, so our URL, our API key, and our cert check are our required fields for this process. So for the URL, all you'll need to do is point to the either the straight up IP or the domain of MISP. Um, and so if I go back to my MISP instance, you see it's running on my 192.168.1.187 here in my uh, lab environment. And so that's where we'll point to. And uh, just make sure you add the tailing slash um, and you also will be HTTPS as well. Um, so there aren't any junctions or anything behind the slash it's just a slash and that'll and that instructs cortex where to make the api call out to and the next value here will need to create an api key for that enables cortex to authenticate with misp for every api request so if we jump back into misp and we go under administration, you'll see this list auth keys. So go ahead and select that. Uh, you do have to be an admin, I believe. You do have to be the admin or have the admin role to be able to see this. So, so make sure you're signed in as that. Select the list auth keys. And here you'll see I have two here. Um, MISP does wildcard the key out. So so we'll need to generate a new one for our instance. So here is the one I have here, but if, you, but if you're watching this video, you probably don't have one yet. So go ahead and select the add authentication key. You'll select the user you're adding it for. Here I'm just using my admin user. And then here you have allowed IPs, which is kind of nice. So we can, we can only specify particular, if, so if we want, we can only specify 
particular IPs that can access our the REST API and make requests to MISP, right? So I could put my internal IP address, like if I go back into Cortex, this is running on 192.168.1.184. I could put that here if I want. Make sure you strip out the HTTP or HTTPS. Make sure you strip out the protocol there. And um, we could allow it based on an IP as well. Uh, if you want to allow anything within the network and want to do it easily, you can just do an o.o.o.o slash o, and that will allow any IP address to connect to make API calls to miss. They still have to authenticate with the key. So even if even if it is an allowed IP address, but it doesn't know the off key, MISP won't authenticate it either. So just kind of another layer of security that you can add if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and add it to the 0.0.0, so saying that anyone could connect. So I'll go ahead and submit, and then you'll get your off key created. Uh, you, hit, you will, they give you a little warning here that once you select the, I have noted down my key, take me back now, you won't be able to grab the full value of the API key. So make sure you copy this and throw it in a notepad or something somewhere. Um, just because I, so I have it copied and then I'll select, I've noted down my key, take me back now. Now you can see that I can't, I can't view it, so I can't copy the whole the whole value, and that's that's gone now. So just make sure that you copy it, or you'll have to repeat that process again. So then we'll jump back into Cortex, and here under the key field is where you'll paste the API key that you just created. So make sure you then paste. So you'll paste that in there, and then we go to the cert check. So MISP is listening on HTTPS. However, you can tell Cortex to verify the cert or not. So here, this is probably just a self-signed cert. Yeah, so here, this is a MISP self-signed cert, but if you have your own CA within your internal network, then you can specify that you want to check the certificate and you can then point to the path of the CA to check for. So adds an extra layer of security as well if you want to. Um, if you're hosting this internally, I like to just set this to false just because it's easiest. But again, if internally you have your own CA within your internal network, you can enable this and point to the correct cert path and point to the correct CA on the system. So then after that, you'll go ahead and hit save. Um, I've already configured this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit cancel. And then after hitting save, you'll see that it is enabled here as well. So let's go ahead and run a quick test. So if we scroll back up and select new analysis here, we'll just choose a data type. We'll just make this easy. And I'll just say 8.8.8.8. And you see now our MISP analyzer has appeared now. So we'll go ahead and select the checkbox, select start. And then if we tail the cortex logs, we should see that the API request be is, is made. And sure enough, here we see it's starting to go out and that it's running. And we see that it came back as success. And you also see all that in the UI as well. So in the UI, it came back as success as well. And we can go ahead and view this. And then we're seeing events associated with it, which is really cool. And now since now that we have it in Cortex, we can also do it within the hive as well, right? Which is our uh, our sock, which is our central sock here. So uh, let me go ahead and I've created these fake alerts already. Uh, so let me preview and import this guy into a case. And I'll go under my observables. Um, this value is just something that's randomly generated uh, during the script that I run to create uh, fake alert. So I'm going to go ahead and add our own observable just so we can see. And just so we make sure we get a positive hit, let's just grab a value from a event that we know uh, would trigger something. So we have IP. Okay, yeah, let's just do a domain. That's fine. So I'll copy this waterforplants.net. <laughs> Shout out to the plants, I guess. Um, I will go back into the hive, I'll select domain, and I will paste the domain in here. And for tags, I'll just say misp, and I will create the observable. So now that that's created, we'll go ahead and run our select it, select run analyzers, and now we see the misp option available for selection. So I'll select the misp option, select run selected analyzers, 
And what we'll see is that Cortex, the Hive, again, makes its call to Cortex to say, hey, Cortex, run this analyzer against MISP. And here we come back with a success. And here we see our report saying, hey, we have an event where the domain that you provided us exists. So if we go ahead and select this, we then immediately see, which is awesome, right? We immediately see the event that it is associated with. So if I go back into MISP and scroll back up, you see the event name and the hive is telling us, hey, this is the event name that we see this IOC um, tied to. And what's even better if I select this, select the drop, we then get the drop down, we get the event ID and some a little more metadata around the event. We also get related events which is really cool. And then I can open this link in a new tab and it points me directly to MISP. So now my analyzers can quickly see that, hey, this observable has a positive hit and I can quickly link directly to MISP and see that and see the APT group or the APT group or malware family or whatever the event is, we see what it is associated with and then other IOCs. So now I can start to, now I can proactively start to, you know, maybe DNS sinkhole, these domains, blacklist IPs that are associated with this, or even do some threat hunting and see if, hey, have any other servers connected connected to these domains or do, do I see any network traffic out to these specific IP addresses? We're able to see that so quickly, right? And, and how awesome is that? We're able to add an observable, tell Cortex, hey Cortex, with this specific event or with this specific observable, I want you to query MISP and see if this particular IOC exist in any events and it returns back to us. Yep, we see it here and we have a nice little hyperlink that takes us directly to MISP and loads the event in for us and now we can see all of the metadata around it, which which is awesome. And it makes your SOC team so much more efficient. Uh, they're so much faster and the chance of them maybe glossing over something accidentally is significantly minimized. We're really taking the human part out of it, which is really nice. You know, all someone has to do is load an observable, uh, you know, select a few checkboxes, run the analyzer and kick it off. And they're not having to waste time manually searching through everything. You know, that can be like finding a needle in a haystack where here we automate that and make it so much faster. And I think that wraps it up for this video. Uh, as always, leave any questions or comments down below. Uh, I also do have a Discord server that I would love for you guys to join. Uh, I'll link it down in the description as well. Uh, it's, it helps me stay a little more organized. I can sometimes lose track of YouTube comments, um, especially as the channel continues to grow, which is a good thing. Uh, but I want to make sure that I'm not skipping over any of you guys' comments or missing out of them accidentally and I also want to provide a place for the community to just hang out at, recommend any new tools or any features that they would like to see videos on and just have a common ground where like-minded people can hang out and discuss. So again, I'll link that down below. I appreciate you guys spending some time with me today and I will see you in the next one.